Welcome back to Rising to the Challenge of Teaching Remotely. I hope you got up and went for a walk, at least stretched, petted your cat, whatever you need to do to take a break. And now we're still talking about ideas for games and specifically a couple more ideas for breakout rooms. I know I said I didn't really like breakout rooms, but I do have some things I do in breakout rooms. So the next thing, I begged, begged, begged my IT department to allow my students to download an UNO game. Now, normally in my classroom, this is a big test that we have is they have to learn to play UNO in the target language because then they know their numbers and colors. That's like first month of school. And so I had to beg my IT department to do it because they didn't want the students to have games on their computers. But I convinced them, I made my case. I said, this is why I need it. This is how I normally use it. And this was a huge hit in breakout rooms. And I could pretty well be guaranteed that they would be staying in the target language because they really wanted to play Uno. And so that worked really well. Another thing I did was I emailed them all battleship boards. And this is an example of one for my French class. Um, this is my French 2 class, actually. Uh, I had present tense and past tense here. They're working on a, a past, composed past tense and they had pictures of all the food. And so I emailed this to them so that they could use a drawing program like Microsoft Paint or whatever drawing program they liked. And they could draw their battleships on there and then they could ask each other and they'd have to match up I eat, I have eaten, and what food in order to sink the other person's battleship. And that worked very well. And another thing I normally do as a test in a, in a regular classroom but worked really well online is we played guess who. So once the students can describe people, they, hey, uh, do you have blonde hair? No, I don't have blonde hair. Uh, do you have uh, pink clothes? Yes, I have pink clothes. Uh, are you a man? No, I'm not a man. And they could ask that. So I use I always use characters that the students know from either stories we're reading or movies that we're watching or whatever. And um, they get really good at this and it's super fun. That's all I do for breakout rooms. Now I'm going to talk to you about other ways to keep your students engaged during your online class that doesn't involve breakout rooms because, of course, in a breakout room, you don't really have much control over whether your students are really engaged unless you're in there in the breakout room with them, and that's hard to do. I had tremendous success with TPRS. TPRS is teaching proficiency through reading and storytelling. And once I started doing it this way, I'll tell you that even in my regular in-person classes, I still do it this way because the visual supports turned out to be so gosh darn good for this. So TPRS is you create some very simple story with whatever simple vocabulary you want, and then you let your students make it crazy, basically. So here we had Duo was going to Japan to go camping, and we went through, oh, is he going to the school? No, that's stupid. He's not going to school. Is he going to the United States? No, he's not going to the United States. That's ridiculous. And my touchpad is not responding here. I'll move it over there. Is he going to a store? No, he's not going to a store. So we went through all the all the possible places that he could go. And the students decided, and actually for this class, they decided he was going to the moon. So I had to change this and I had to get another picture and it was just super fun. But um, this works so well. What I did, this took a little bit of preparation up front, but now that I have it, I have it forever. You see, I went through all the possible words I thought the students would ever want to know. These are school supplies, okay? And here's my um, French class, all the same school supplies, and my Spanish class, all the same school supplies. And then whenever I need them for a story, it is so super easy for me just to select. Oh, I can cut and paste and I can put it right in the story and it is literally five seconds. No matter what the students throw at me, I can create a story very quickly or I make the bare bones of the story and then I've got all the things there to cycle through and the students have that picture plus the seeing the words, the writing, really help them. Um, this worked great in an online environment. Um, I had to have the students unmute because, of course, they don't want to unmute. 
So I gave him the choice of either unmute or show me your face. Show me your face so I can see your lips moving or unmute and you can stay your black screen that you normally stay because we'll talk about that coming up in the next episode. Oh, maybe this was my favorite game. Any kind of art game were super, super fun. I, I tend to say super fun, don't I? This was great. Um, I have a bunch of dice. I like, I like collecting dice and I also have these um, wooden cubes and I color on the wooden cubes. So I've made wooden cubes with uh, clothing and wooden cubes with body parts and wooden cubes with just, I just took markers and do colors on them. So I made my own homemade dice and this is my cheat sheet. So I would roll the dice and I would say, okay, um, maybe we, maybe I had another dice with animals and I said, the mouse is on top of, maybe I rolled a one and I got on top of and then I had another dice with furniture on top of the desk or whatever. And then I'd have the students draw it. And then at the end, they'd have to show their drawings to everyone. Okay, some of the students did it on the computer, on uh, MS Paint or their favorite drawing program. And some of the students um, just grabbed uh, paper and, and markers from near them. And this was one where I described a monster because we were working on body parts. I said, the monster has, roll the dice, um, three, heads oh and they're all green and roll the dice and the monster has six eyes you know whatever i said i just rolled the dice and then have the students draw it out and oh my gosh they love this they could not get enough of it and it was very very easy to just hey i can tell i'm losing their focus let's do a dice game because i had all my dice right there um there's a lot of stuff we can do with the chat boxes now, mostly I like the students to use annotate and then we we annotate over pictures and stuff. But chat boxes are really good in that you can see the student's name immediately. And so you know to whom to attribute what sentence. And um, the first thing I wanna show you, let me go to the internet, interwebs and I will show you. Okay, so you know I like to use dice. Well, this is a website called wheelofnames.com, all one word, wheelofnames.com. And I'm able to put whatever I want instead of a student's name to choose a student. I decided I was going to put in different verbs and then I would just randomly spin it, click to spin, and then it comes up something. And then I would roll another dice and say, okay, your verb is hablar and you have to match it to usted. And then in the chat box, they would have to uh, do all the conjugation. And this was a really good way to drill down on conjugation, which was really hard to do remotely. But you can see this is normally for like choosing a student's name who's going to go next on something. Let me show you some more chat box games. This is another really fun one, and it works great in person as well as online. I went down to my local librarian, who is a good buddy of mine, but uh, it's easy to make buddies with a local librarian because they want to help you. And um, I said, what do you have in the way of sound effects? And she checked out for me all the BBC sound effects. And um, so I ripped it because it's BBC and this is a library and this is for educational purposes. So it's completely fine. Right. And so as it shows up, this is this program is Active Inspire, but um, I'm sure you've got another program. As it shows up here, at little speakers, they're just little sound effects, okay? So what I do is I have my students, I just choose like three random students, and I say grab a, a sound effect randomly, and they'll just grab this one, or they'll grab this one, uh, they'll grab this one randomly, and um, then they play the sound effects, And then the students have to write a story um, about the sound effects. So I don't know, we heard glass breaking and then we heard people saying boo. So maybe somebody broke something he shouldn't have broken. My favorite was one time there was a like a jackhammer and a couple of students thought it was a dentist drill. So we got some crazy stories and that was really fun and super, super, I like saying super fun, huh? Easy to type into the chat box. Uh, another thing you can do with this is you can get a bunch of pictures. These are Duolingo pictures. And again, I have students randomly choose a couple pictures, put them up at the top, and then, okay, write a story on what you see there. Similar idea. 
Uh, and then <laughs> my daughter likes to send me crazy cat pictures. And those are wonderful, wonderful, wonderful to write sentences about. So I'll show a picture and I'll say, write me any sentence you'd like about the picture. Normally we do this in a classroom on mini whiteboards, but it works great in chat boxes too. Here's another cat drinking a soda through the window. So I'm sure you've seen the one with the cats with the tails. And then uh, next page, I probably have the perspective pictures. Yeah, you can find all sorts of great pictures that who knows what your students will write, but they'll be using the language, they'll be applying the language. Um, just whatever you can find that's going to spark them and make them laugh and uh, really want to get involved with what they're seeing. All right, I'm going to have to pause here and we're going to need a part three so I can show you uh, my last two favorite games all right so again get up and stretch uh go go for a walk around the block go outside with your binoculars and look at birds and do something to rejuvenate yourself don't sit in front of the computer for 100 million hours see you on the next side